In this video I will tell you everything we know so far about the upcoming Intel 13th generation of desktop processors codenamed Raptor Lake. That includes specifications, performance, release date and prices. FYI, it will be a mix of information that has been officially revealed by Intel as well as leaks from the sources that I trust. Before that, buy your Windows 10 or 11 key for less from cdkeyoffer.com at the link in the description below. Use code IV20 to get a 25% discount that brings the price down to as low as $16. You can securely check out with PayPal and receive your Windows key in minutes, ready to be activated on your PC. Let's start with specifications. Before we get to the individual i5, i7 and i9 specs, I want to cover the improvements that the entire 13th gen platform will share. The new CPUs will use the same LGA1700 socket, which means that you will be able to drop in a new processor into your existing 600 series motherboard after a BIOS update, but Intel will still release the newer and better 700 series motherboards. On these new motherboards I expect to see more PCIe 5.0 slots, as well as other feature improvements such as more fast USB ports and more PCIe 4.0 lanes provided by the chipset. 13th gen will support DDR5-5600 memory by default compared to DDR5-4800 on the current 12th gen. The new generation will be manufactured on the Intel 7 node. The 12th gen processors are currently manufactured on the same node. It is mature by now, so expect higher core clock speeds on all 13th gen models. The latest leaks suggest that the new processors will have significantly more cache. Up to 68 MB total L2 plus L3 cache compared to just 44 MB on the current flagship i9-12900K. Now let's have a look at what the expected specs are for the individual i5, i7 and i9 CPUs. Recently Intel has demonstrated its flagship CPU with 24 cores and 32 threads. They did not name it, but it is quite clear that it was an i9-13900K. It features 8 P cores and 16 E cores. That is a lot more cores compared to 8 P cores and 8 E cores we currently have in a 12900K. TDP is the same, 125 watts. i7 13700K should have 16 cores and 24 threads with 8 P cores and 8 E cores at 125 watts TDP. That is the same configuration as i9 12900K has right now. For comparison, 12700K has 8 P cores and 4 E cores, for a total of 12 cores and 20 threads. i5 13600K should feature 14 cores and 20 threads at 125 watts TDP, that is 6 P cores and 8 E cores. It will be a nice multi-threading performance boost compared to i5 12600K, which has 10 cores and 16 threads. These three Intel 13th gen CPUs should launch first, followed by non-K models and i3 processors at a later date. According to the latest leaks, Intel 13th gen will be released in late quarter 3 2022, most likely in August or September. The prices should remain more or less the same as the current generation equivalents. Intel cannot afford to raise prices because of the fierce competition with AMD, who is getting ready to launch its next generation of Ryzen 7000 series desktop processors at around the same time. The 13th gen performance will be about 10-15% better in single thread and 30-40% in multi-thread applications. In terms of gaming performance, I expect i9-13900K to be 10-20% better than 12900K. The lower tier models should see a similar improvement. I prepared several possible scenarios comparing Intel 13th Gen vs Ryzen 7000 series and Intel 12th Gen. FYI, Ryzen 7 5800X3D is in the charts, but the data is based on benchmarks conducted by AMD, as we still don't have any independent tests of this CPU. The first scenario is if Intel 13th gen CPUs turn out very well with 17% improvement and AMD processors are on the lower side of the expectations with 20% improvement. In this case, they will be equal 
Yes, surprisingly, the worst case scenario for AMD means that it will still be extremely competitive. The next scenario represents the worst case for Intel if it manages to get just 10% improvement, and if AMD gets 35%. That is without the use of 3D vCache, which can bump up this figure even higher. Still, Intel would be absolutely destroyed in gaming with Ryzen 7000 leading by almost 20%. The third scenario is equalized. Both AMD and Intel managed to do quite well, but far from the best case scenario. In this case, AMD would win by almost 10%, which is close to an entire generation worth of performance improvements. If both manage to improve by a bare minimum of what is expected from them, then AMD would still end up on the top, leading by around 6%. Although I think that this scenario is unlikely, as I expect both products to be much better than this. If both companies deliver exceptional products, with 20% improvement by Intel and 40% improvement by AMD, then it would look like this, with AMD leading by almost 14%. I don't know how Intel would market its CPUs to gamers if that happens. I guess it is a good thing that Intel 14th gen is expected to launch less than a year after 13th gen, so it will not be that long before Intel catches up. As a bonus, I created the scenario where AMD manages to get just 20% improvement, but also adds 3D vCache to its processes. Basically, that would allow AMD to achieve the best case scenario against Intel without having massive architectural improvements. And here is what could happen if Intel 13th gen does very well with 17% improvement and AMD goes crazy with 40% improvement as well as adding 3D vCache on top of that. Absolute madness. I have no idea how Intel would ever recover from this in the next couple of generations, as there would be a 28% gap in performance between the competitors. Do you think this is just crazy talk or am I onto something here? Join me in the conversation in the comments below. Also, like the video if you enjoyed it. It was I, Vadim. Until next time.